What's up everyone? Lance Hedrick here and today we're going to look at the cheapest option for incredible espresso. Before hopping into the video, I would ask that you take a second, hit that subscribe, hit the like, leave a comment or something like that if you enjoy my content. Of course, you, if you this is the first video you've seen, no imperative to do that now. A lot of people tend to forget, so I like to remind because it really helps me. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into the good stuff. So I wanted to make a quick video today on what I find to be probably the best espresso setup for a quite a cheap price, under 250 US dollars. Now this will include the grinder and the espresso machine itself, two critical elements for this. Now, of course, you would also need something to heat your water up, but you can use some sort of stovetop pan or you can use, uh, if you already have a hot water heater of some sort, you don't need a gooseneck kettle for the purpose of this video. I will be using one, but it's not necessary. And then also I would recommend getting a scale, but of course you could use some sort of $10 one online and it will still keep us under 250 because the two things I have to show you come out under 250. But first up, let's get the espresso machine. So we have the Flare Neo. The Flare Neo is a direct lever machine, meaning whenever you push down on it, you are directly applying force. Now that is in contrast to a spring lever machine, which that's a whole different thing altogether, so we won't get into that. But this, the amount you push is the amount of pressure that's gonna be built up using a piston that's right inside. So this uh, we'll go through and demonstrate here in a second, but this is a solid built espresso machine for 125 US dollars. Now next up, of course, we need the hand grinder, which is right here. This is the Easy Presso Q2 Heptagonal. It's a 99 US dollars. So these two together, if you can do quick math, $224. So 224, that leaves you with about 25 bucks to spare, buy a scale, you're good to go. Uh, the scales, again, you can, whatever's on Amazon or, or wherever you wanna buy a scale that has something down to like a 10th of a gram, you could buy a jewelry scale, you could buy anything like that is gonna do the job. You just need it to weigh the dose of your, uh, of your coffee and then the output, just something small that'll fit right here. I'll link a couple options uh, that you can take a look at. Anyway, let's continue on. So this I have, uh, there are two options with this. You have one with a heptagonal burr and one with a pentagonal burr. If you're more akin to liking medium light roasted coffees, I would definitely recommend the heptagonal. If you like darker roasted coffees, the pentagonal will do just as well. You can also have a cheap option in the Time More C2, which is a solid grinder. I, I personally prefer the Easy Presso, but if you have the Time More, that is also a great sub $100 grinder. And those are the kind of the ones I tend to recommend recommend right here. And with the flare, these are the kind of components that go inside of it. So we have a pressurized portafilter. Quick make a wish. <laughs> we have a pressurized portafilter here coming out there. Now you can easily depressurize it by unscrewing the bottom, which I recommend you doing, and taking out what they call their flow control, hot tomatoes, hot potatoes, their flow control device which really just means pressurized. So this forces a building of pressure, has an O-ring around it to seal it off. It forces a building of pressure inside here, which means if your grind size isn't great or if you use pre-ground coffee, you'll still get a sort of foamy head that I call a faux crema. Now it's not crema in the same way that crema is created. It's more of a faux type crema, but it still gives you a nice texture. It's a solid thing to have if you're not wanting to shell out money for a grinder or if you use pre-ground coffee or something like that. Now what you wanna do with this is you just wanna kinda take it, you wanna put it in your mouth and then you swallow it and, and you don't need it anymore. So now we have a depressurized basket. I'm just gonna put this back on so that's a clean extraction. But you don't need, you don't need the, pressure, uh, the pressurized kit. We just want normal basket, okay? Now, Flare does offer a bottomless option, uh, but honestly, unless you just really want to have 
the capability of seeing the extraction come out with a shop mirror or something. I don't think you really need that. It's just extra money that I don't really find that necessary. Um, you can do it just with this, no problem. All right, then of course you have the shower screen. This is to help evenly disperse the water on top of the grounds. So this just places right on top of the grounds, bada bing, bada boom. And then when we put it inside of the, the chamber, you fill water inside the top hole. You got that uh, You got that going for you. Now the piston itself, you take out using the little tamper. You just put the tamper down, put it right here and bombs away and it's gone. So now we have our chamber, which is just stainless steel. So you need to preheat this baby over a kettle with hot water, put it in a bowl with really hot boiling water. That's redundant, really hot boiling. Um, I don't know, you see. Um, so we're gonna put that in hot water, or you can put it, I like to lay it on the side on top of my kettle, let the steam kind of get it up so I'm not really uh, wasting any water just to preheat. But this needs to be heated up really, really nicely. So you have the tamper, and it's also the little shover piece to get the piston out. And then of course you have the funnel, which you put on top of the basket to get the coffee in. And a really cool thing about the funnel that you probably didn't know is if you if you listen really close, li closely to it, you like put it up to your ear, what you're gonna hear is really interesting. It, it, uh, you put it up really close and you'll hear this. It's kind of like a seashell, and when you put it up to your ear and you hear the ocean, it's kind of like that, but not. So um, it's kind of neat. It's kind of neat. So anyway, let's go ahead, stop the jibber jabber, and let's 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 pull a shot and see how it does. So there we have our shot, 12 and a half grams in, about 25, 26 grams out, and it's tasty. I started with the pre-infusion, ramped up to where I think is about eight or nine bar, and then slowly descended as I felt the puck eroding. And it took about, you know, 30, I don't know, 30 seconds or so. Now the shot itself may not have looked that pretty, but it's because we removed that pressurized bit. And so it's coming out of a basket and trying to funnel through one small hole. So it's gonna stick onto one side. And you know, when you think about uh, the, the bonds between water molecules, et cetera, it's gonna kind of find an avenue and just keep coming out that way. But it's not gonna affect the shot extraction itself. Now, if you want to upgrade and have the capability of seeing that pressure, which will really allow you to harness in your espresso, the next upgrade would be the manometer that Flare offers for the Neo. Now this will simply replace the little piston that we have. So you just put this in instead and you push it down and you're able to see the pressure that is building. I highly recommend this after you have started with your startup Flare Neo and your grinder. This would be the first upgrade. And this thing I believe runs at 56 US dollars. So now we've we've gone from about 230, 225, 230 dollars. We have the scale to about 250. Then over time, as you grow into your, your equipment, you can add this on and now you're at 300 US dollars. So we've got a cheap scale. Of course, I'm using the Akai Lunar, but let's assume this is like a 10 or 20 dollar scale. We have this now, and so now we're at a 300 dollar setup. The next option that you have if you want to upgrade a little bit more is you could switch out the Q2 heptagonal and you could instead get the X Pro. The Q2 heptagonal has 24 microns per click and they're in it. it's an interior adjustment system, which is not ideal. For 50 extra dollars, you can get the X Pro, which I really love. It's an exterior adjustment system with 12 and a half microns per click. It has the same burst set as the Q2 heptagonal does, but it's a lot better feeling. It has, it's bigger, so you, it's easier to grab. It has an exterior adjustment system. And again, you can have more precision on dialing in. So maybe that wouldn't be a great upgrade, but it would be something to consider when you're first buying. So instead of a $250 budget, if you have a $300 budget at the beginning, you can go ahead and get this and instead of this grinder. Or if you wanna go crazy, 350 bucks, you can get all of this. 
manometer included. Now, this is not sponsored by anyone. This is genuinely what I'm finding as the best uh, kind of budget setup. I get people asking all the time, I can't afford uh, a fully a fully decked out uh, machine. I can't afford this, that, or the other. And so I tend to recommend the Neo quite often. Now, I know some of you will ask about the Pico Presso. I'll have a video coming up on that. I think it's great, but I think for home use, I would prefer a lever to a button. Uh, it's kind of unstable. It's, it's kind of wonky. The workflow isn't as clean as this, in my opinion. So I definitely recommend this at that same price range, 125 US dollars. Again, the grinder is 99. This grinder is 150. I'll have everything linked below. Uh, I will not be putting affiliate links down there because I don't want you to think I'm making these recommendations for any type of money. This is just my thoughts. Let me take another sip because I need caffeine. <sighs> Nice. So, um, I recommend if you can, of course, starting with the X Pro, the manometer, and all of this. If not, the Q heptagonal with none of that is completely fine as well. Now, again, if you want, they do have the bottomless porta filter. I just don't see it as a necessity. You'll have pretty shots, but um, they're going to taste the same. So, I wouldn't really worry about this, but for for the video, I am going to put this on so you can have a nice looking extraction. You can see what's going on because this does make it look ugly, and I want you to know it is not ugly. It's beautiful and it's delicious. So let's pull another shot with the X Pro and with the manometer, and we'll see how that goes. Oh, forgot you were still here. <laughs> I'm just sipping on a delicious, full-bodied, full-textured espresso that I made using my extremely budget-friendly setup. And I want to invite you to do the same. So, that is the, uh, the little cheap espresso but still going yum town video. And if you want to add milk to it because you're someone that wants some milkies on occasion, well, guess what? I've got an answer for that too. The Nano Bomber. I brush my teeth with it. Makes them clean. So, the Nano Foamer does a great job at making microfoam for you to have some uh, nice texture. And there's actually a masterclass on there that I taught about a year ago or so for latte art. So, this is a nice one to add as well. It's about, I don't know, around 40, 40 US dollars or so. And the new one has a click on, click off button, which is much better than the previous version, which you had to hold down the whole time. But yeah, that's a little something something if you'd like it. I keep it in my back pocket. That's a joke, pun intended. Um, but yeah, that's the video. Um, cheap espresso machine, 125. You can add the upgrades, 56 bucks for the manometer. You can get the $150 grinder, the $99 grinder, or the Time More cheap grinder. They're all gonna do a really good job and they're gonna give you some high quality, cafe quality, I'm not kidding, espresso. Just keep in mind that the, the capacity in there, the capacity is around 12 to 14 or 15 grams. Inside there, a little handbook thing, it says up to 18. Maybe if you're using coffee that is charred to the pits of hell, you might be able to shove 15 in there or 18 in there, but I have no luck even with my darkest coffee. So I'm gonna tell you to be safe around 12 to 15 grams in and you can get, you know, a decent shot out. If you want to do a one to three, you can get about 45 grams out. But anyway, I digress. We have talked enough today. And now to end with a little ditty, an ode to this beautiful espresso ode. I call it my espresso ode. Isn't she lovely? Isn't she wonderful? Isn't she precious? Just over a minute old I can't find something else As pretty as what's in my hand Isn't she lovely Made from love <sighs> I hope you brew something tasty today Hit that subscribe, hit that like, go on, I know you want to. <laughs> You're so silly.
Until next time, brew something tasty and binge a few of my videos. Cheers. <laughs> Don't show me! Don't show me!